First of nine today at Eagle Farm. Gates open, they're off and racing. Hidden Wealth was about midfield away. Tickeretti jumped fast, so did Ruben Ocky. They're the first two on settling down. Go to third, Sir Carter, just between the pair. Fourth away, Instagood. And Hidden Wealth will settle fifth, one away from the rail. Island Magic, sixth on the fence. Two at Pofus, no early speed. And two to Baker, last of all. 700 left to run. Tickeretti going for five straight today. Leads Sir Carter by three quarters of a length. Ruben Ocky, third on the rail. Hidden Wealth on the improved. Fourth and coming up three wide at the turn. Putting against a good four deep. Behind them as they straight for home was Island Magic looking for the way clear. A Pofus coming right to the outside and then came Baker. It's Ticcaretti in front. Tackled by Cicada. Hidden Wealth coming at the pair. Then it's the good. A Pofus right down the outside. Nearly five in line here. Ticcaretti trying to hang on. A Pofus on the outside coming after it. Gamely now. Ticcaretti at the hundred. A Pofus. They pair off. A Pofus on the outside. Ticcaretti the inside. A Pofus goes home a little too well and beats Ticcaretti. Hidden Wealth third. Then came Sir Carter, Insta Good, followed by Island Magic Baker, and Ruben Ocky whipped them in. A really stylish win by this horse today, Lindsay. Congratulations, and nice to see him sort of contained at the back today instead of burning all that fuel early. Yeah, it wasn't the plan, Burn. I thought when he missed the kick, he was in strife, but Georgie just went to plan B, I guess, and travelled up. I guess Race is putting his head a bit thicker at he's been coming from the back next minute, he's in front, and but, yeah, when they went 100 yards, I thought we were in pain, of course, but he's done a good job. He might be a handy your spoon. Yeah, I think he might be. You had him turned out looking in great order today, and he's always been a bit busy at the front end, so maybe he learns a lot today. His own worst enemy, no doubt. He, he just he, he has a tendency to overreact to a lot of things. He, he just throws his head. All right, we're going to have a chat to our winning jockey, Georgina Cartwright, now. and. She's going to tell us all about this horse, Apophis. He's definitely not the easiest horse to ride. In fact, he's quite a, quite a trick, actually. He's got a bag full of tricks. Today, Georgie, he wasn't away well. You had to go to plan B. I've been dying to see this horse ridden like this since he started. Yeah, he's a very tricky horse to ride. Uh, he can often be slow out, and once we were slow out, I thought, oh, it's game over. Um, he has a habit of throwing his head when he's in behind, but um, he settled quite well today, and I wasn't too annoyed once I saw I was behind Hidden Wealth, so um, got a nice trail into the race, and he finished off strong. And you'd probably like to sort of see him stick at this trip? Yeah, I think so. Um, just... He just wants to throw his head if you sort of get it. It's not that he pulls, but as soon as you sort of touch, touch his mouth, he often um, wants to throw his head. He just wants to go. Tell me, how did this track feel? Yeah, the track felt lovely. Um, it's obviously got a little bit of give in it, but um, I think it'll improve throughout the day. Irish Sally moves in, the light turned on, ready to jump. They're racing. Ellie Teama on the inside began well, flew them on nicely away, second on settling down, as Ellie Teama is the initial leader. Bella Tavachi third at the jump, fourth away Irish Knight, followed then by Masquerade. Drifting back will not quit, 80 grand as second last, and Irish Sally is last of all. At this stage, nothing taking on Ellie Teama as they go to the 1400 metres. And leads at a leisurely tempo, just over a length in front. Racing second, Fleur de Monde. And Bella Tavachi sliding through on the inside to be third and end up in the box seat. Two-way masquerade outside of Irish Knight. They race together. Two to 80 grand. The one-time favourite is third last. About six off the lead in the middle part. Will not quit on his inside. And two to Irish Sally last of all. L.A. Tayama goes towards the back bend with 1,100 metres left to go, getting the easiest of runs in front, just cruising up front. Leads Fleur de Monde, nice and close to it though, trailing by just over a length. Bella Tavachi in third. Masquerade's getting a good run mid-race. There's no change to the running order, and fair to say no change to the speed either. It's casual. Irish Knight, Park 5th defence, one away 80 grand, would like a bit more tempo on as they go by the 800 metres and will not quit, and Irish Sally with the last pair. Travelling down the side, they've got around 700 left to go. 
go. Ella Tayama leads away. Fleur de Mon for the first time begins to get serious. Goes up on the outside. Trails by a neck. Bella Tavachi's had the drop on the pair from the get-go. Masquerade travelling up to be fourth at the turn. Then came Irish Knight, followed by Irish Sally, just ahead of Lady Grand, being pushed along by Wheeler to try and respond and will not quit as last of all. Ella Tayama was the first beaten. Fleur de Mon on the outside. Dash to the front. Bella Tavachi tries hard. Then Masquerade. 80 Grand is coming down the outside and Irish Knight over on the rail. 100 metres left to go. Fleur de Mont is a clear leader. They're not catching it at this stage. Bella Tavachi for the Cornella, but it's Fleur de Mont's day today. Beat home, Bella Tavachi. 80 grand, good late for third, and Irish Knight in fourth. Then Ella Tayama, disappointing after leading, followed by Masqueray. Will not quit. Chris Waller takes out race number two here at Eagle Farm today. Let's have a chat with, chat rather, with stable foreman Brett Killian and break out the streamers, Brett. She's done it today and she's done it in style. Yeah, if ever horse deserved a Saturday Metro win, it's her. She's very honest, doesn't know how to run a bad race. And when that rain came yesterday, it you know, really benefited her. Yeah, I mean, she's just been just so consistent, sometimes looking like, oh, is the 1800 the right trip for her? But she did it today. Yeah, well, funny thing, we are actually meant to drop the blinkers because she just overdoes a little bit, but I think we forgot. Anyway, uh, out of you because luckily... Um, I think Andrew Marion took it up, so she had a nice drop. Yeah. And she was, you know, she's able to position herself not too far away either. She puts herself in the frame every time. She can, she can lead, she can sit off, and, you know, I, I think mile and under is just ideal for her. Anything else you like today from your team? Um, oh, look, DeMarque's in the same boat. You'd just like to see him just drop the bit, um, just have a dozen little bit. And Chernak, he's on the seven-day backup after running well last week, so they'll race well. And Mark Duplessis was the winning rider on Fleur de Mont here today. So let's have a chat to him about it. It was nice to have a bunny and you switched her off today. Yeah, look, she's very deserved of a win. Um, first of all, thanks to Chris and his team and the owners. Um, I did mention maybe taking the blinkers off last time because she's the two times before that she's pulled very hard, even with cover. But today, she actually switched off for some reason, so I guess they'll be staying on. Maybe she just liked the, a bit more given the track, made it more comfortable throughout the run. She definitely, under pressure, felt that way, Bernie. Um, she's a real daisy cutter, but yeah. with her toe on the ground, she really, she was never going to get beaten today. Yeah. I hope it rains before she races next. She loves it. Yeah, I'll do a rain dance. <laughs> Red light turned on, 2,200 metres ahead of them. The gates open, they're off and racing, and Flying Joy flew out at the start on Common Vallum again. Well, so too did Bedford Square. They're followed then by DeMarque, and coming down the outside Iowa, he'll go forward and try and find the lead. Celebrate about fifth away on settling down, then Daniloquin, followed by Clyde. Chase and Arnie will be three wide around the first bend. Shernak, as is its custom, getting back with amalgamation. An uncommon valour, no early speed at all. In fact, in the early part of the race, he's detached from the field, three or four lengths away last. Up the side now, short of 1,800 left to Rana, and Iowa sets up the role as pacemaker. Bedford Square, not handy today, racing in second. Normally a back marker but run on the action today and Flying Joy will box seat in third one away Salamarak fourth DeMarque the well back DeMarque landing fifth over on the inside Clyde might be three wide as they turn to the back Daniloquin now it's in the centre yes and Clyde is three wide then Amalgamation tucked away inside of Shernak two to Chase and Arnie and Uncommon Valor the race favourite is last of all eight off the speed and speaking of speed there's not much of it down the back straight 1300 left to run and Iowa being cuddled in front from Bedford Square the jockey on Clyde had two options, go back or go forward. He was sitting wide, so now he goes up to sit outside of the leader, and Flying Joy continues to track well forth the rail. Two away Salamarak, one away DeMarque, one minute to Daniloquin. A length and a half to Shernak over on the outside of Amalgamation. Then came Chase and Arty, and the favourite Uncommon Valor, if he's to win, he has to come from Stone Motherless last. On the side of the track towards Racecourse Village, Iowa dictating the terms to a nicety. It's all been his way so far. Shows out from Clyde. Here's a move 
move by to Deliquin. Rushing around them three wide now, putting the pressure on Iowa. Bedford Square in fourth, Flying Joy back to fifth. DeMarco working one off the rail, putting Salamarak wide. Then came Shernak, Uncommon Valor. Starts to move into the picture. He's still got work to do. He's past two, Amalgamation and Chasenati. At the top of the straight, 400 left to run. Iowa trying to lift from Deliquin. Flying Joy gets an inside run, then Bedford Square. Clyde, DeMarco only whacking away. Where's Uncommon Valor? Still back worse than midfield. Flying Joy sees that inside run. Clyde's still there. Iowa's runner's race. Then to Deliquin and Bedford Square is down the outside. Flying Joy's the leader. Trying out of the outside is Clyde. Flying Joy the inside. Clyde the outside. Flying Joy, big Clyde. Bedford Square third. Uncommon Valor fourth. Then to Deliquin, followed by Iowa. All right. Matt Crop takes out the third here at Eagle Farm with Flying Joy. She's a bit of the star performer from your stable these days. Yeah, she's been a very honest girl. Um, we've always liked to get out over these trips. We're um, hoping we can get there and stay there, have a few more goes at them. Uh, CJ uh, really fell in love with her last time she rode her and she said I'd love to get on her again over a bit more ground and I said, well, that's the plan. So, yeah. I mean, she's had a, a pretty deep campaign but still winning races. Yeah, she's just thriving in Toowoomba. Yeah, she loves it. She's got her routine and... Um, she's always been a bit quirky, but she's getting better and better and, and loving it up there. And a little bit of give in the track today? For sure, that would have helped her, yeah. She had uh, a couple of bad experiences with firm tracks here, and I thought she'd never let down at Eagle Farm again, but she's, um, she showed us that she did last time here. CJ Graham taking out race number three here on Flying Joy. Let's have a chat. Take us through the race. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, it was just nice to draw a better barrier on it today. I run had lots of merit to it the other day. Just had to go right back from the bad alley and she flew home and ran out of a bit of room late. Um, so it was nice to be able to settle on the pace today and although they were going very slow through most parts of it, but I didn't want to have to be the one to inject the tempo into the race. She settled well and there wasn't much room coming around that home bend, um, but once I got the clear running, she was really tough. Yeah, she, that's right, she did tough it out. And when she can just get a few things to go her way in a race, she's pretty good. Sure, and it really appreciates having free galloping room. Um, really good win from her. Well done. at Eagle Farm. Racing. Blue Spinel was only fairly way out wide. Bubba's Bay won the start. Black on Beauty fast away, challenging Bubba's Bay early, and they drive to the first turn together. Barista Sister came out running third away, fourth on settling down Sabalenka, then Bon Cassie, followed by Blue Spinel. She's third last and might be three wide. Renouf just poking up inside of her, and Bold and Loose, his expected, goes out to last. Down by the 800 metres, Black on Beauty in control today. Leads Barista Sister by a neat length. Bubba's Bay third box seeder, and Sabalenka fourth but three wide. Bon Cassie off the track as well. Renouf near the inside. Blue Spinell is starting to improve between runners as they approach the turn and Bold and Lucy whips them in but only five off the lead. Around the bend 4.50 left to run. Black on Beauty's had a good run in front. Leads for home from Sabalenka and Barista Sister. Bubba's Bay looking for the way clear. Blue Spinell in clear space now. Still two to three off them but is running on fairly well but Black on Beauty is currently going great guns. Leads away from Sabalenka trying to fight on. Then Bubba's Bay and Blue Spinell down the outside. 100 left to run. Black on Beauty in front. Blue Spinell winding up at the right time. Black on Beauty the leader. Blue Spinell went to it and beat it. Blue Spinell beat Black on Beauty, Bubba's Bay and Marista Sister. Then came Sabalika, followed by Renouf, Bold and Lucy and Bold Cassie or Bon Cassie was last over the line. All right, let's have a chat with our winning trainer, Tony Golan and Tony, a nice Quinella here for you. Blue Spinell, Black on Beauty. Really not much splits these two but today it was Blue Spinell. Yeah, it was. Uh, Black on Beauty first. She improved significantly off a first up run. Nothing really went right there. Today she got a much smoother time and probably still just fitness told on that filly who's absolutely flying Blue Spinell. I've had a faultless prep with her. I think she's won five of the last six now, so she's in, she's in great form. Um, I thought Ange give her an absolute pearl of a ride today. We're always going to have to go back from a tricky draw and the way she was able to get through them, save ground and 
and show that good turn of foot. She was so strong late. These two girls are really starting to push the, the limit with the handicap in this kind of grade of race. Where will you go next with them? Yeah, I think Black on Beauty just wants one more. We'll just try and find the right race for her. And Blue Spinel, I'll just see what the handicapper does with her today. It, the way that she's going, she's probably one to back off and start looking for some of those Phillies and Mayor Stakes races during the, the Winter Carnival. She's going absolutely beautiful and she'll only improve for more. Ange was great. Brilliant ride by Ange. She's riding really well. I'd, I'd say a year ago or six months ago, she would have got bullied around a lot in the run and not got through where today she was, she was doing the bullying and putting the horse in the right spot. A great affinity with this lady and, and, and Tony's right. She just rode a beautiful race. Well done, Ange. Thank you. Um, probably panned out well in the end, but during those mid stages, it was looking a little bit messy. But um, we were lucky we were able to uh, make the most of what looked like a bit of mid race carnage. She's very brave. I mean, she's got a good determination. She's sort of come through her races really nicely. And every time Tony raises the bar, she raises the height she jumps. That's right, and um, she doesn't love it in amongst horses, but she needs to be to switch it off. And um, coming to the corner, she wasn't travelling great, but as soon as she sees daylight, she knows what she's here for, and I just love her little competitive spirit. Yeah, that's what I love about her, and I think she's earned a spot probably in a listed race over the carnival. Definitely, I think she could pick off a fillies and mares somewhere. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's one with her name on it. Good on you, Ange. Thank you. Heavily back quarantine dreams drawn down low, barrier two in fact. Racing, Iron Grace only fairly away. Stella Lady pinged out of the start, straight to the early lead from Pink Thunder, fast away. Now Magic Island revving up off the wide alley, trying to make light work of it. Quarantine dreams fourth on settling down at Antonito, followed by Iron Grace and then Touch of Gracie off the track, Miss McCall, followed then by Hello in there inside of Anatini, and the last trio, Blazing Love, Claudius and Houston Rocket. Down below the 800 metres, Pink Thunder, Magic Island and Antonito moving up three wide. They're running this at a good gallop, Stella Lady who jumped in front, settles in fourth and gets a great run behind that lead trio. Over on the inside, Quarantine Dreams in fifth. They're followed by Miss McCall, Touch of Gracie, then Iron Grace. A long way back, Hello in there, Anna Tini, Houston Rocket, Claudius and Blazing Love whips them in. On straightening for home, 400 left to run. Pink Thunder under pressure from Magic Island. Quarantine Dreams and Stella Lady, they sweep towards the inside. Antonito under pressure, Touch of Gracie running on. Iron Grace looking for a run and getting it now. The leader was Stella Lady from Antonito touch of Gracie, Iron Grace and Quarantine Dreams, it's still Stella Lady the leader here's Iron Grace coming with Quarantine Dreams, they're finishing struggling on the inside, Iron Grace, Iron Grace got up at one, beat home Quarantine Dreams and Stella Lady then came at the head of the others, touch of Gracie followed by Houston Rocket then Antonito, further back was Claudius, hello in there then came Anatini, Magic Island Week, and so did Pink Thunder, then Miss McCall, and Blazing Love last over the line. All right, well, Iron Grace takes out the fifth, and in, in trainer Scott Morrissey's words, wouldn't that have been a good thing, Beat? You are so right. How many directions or times did she need to change direction? Yeah, look, she's a really nice mare. Um, she's obviously a redhead, so she's a bit hot, but... She's Look, Bronwyn that's riding her work this time has done a fantastic job with her and she's just been more normal as a racehorse and we know the ability's there but um, I thought she'd be really hard to beat today. She goes good fresh and then she just found a few dead ends. I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> good on her, Samantha. She deserved to win on her. She's had a couple of goes at her and, and hasn't had a lot of luck and mostly horse's fault, not her fault, but it was good for, good for Samantha. And you can't underestimate a great track work rider either, can you? Ah, oh, look, look, she gets on really well. And not that any other one has been bad with her, but I don't know, they just gel and just, you can work them like normal horses and it just makes a big difference. A big start. She got into today's race with the minimum. Yeah, oh, look, I, 
for a, she had a couple of little unofficial on the poly and under a throttle hold, and I just sort of said, Smit, you only need luck and you'll win. And we got it, thank God. All right, let's have a chat to the jockey of the moment. That was an extraordinary ride. Uh, obviously, things just kept going wrong for you in the straight, and you had all this horse. I tell you, I'm very grateful for Scotty to let me ride her again because last prep was just disaster after disaster. So um, she obviously paraded in great fashion today and she was fresh and she went ran out of her skin sort of first and second up last prep over those sort of short trips and was just getting too far out of her ground. But she's a lot more mature now. I was able just to ride her a little bit more aggressively to hold that spot, which just made my, made my job easier. But... Geez, up the straighter was in and out and left and right. And I was like, oh, God damn, but it got there when it counted. Yeah, she had the revs up. I mean, she, she really wanted to rip home. She did. She's just, like I said, last prep was just a disaster. And she's, she's a lot better than what her form looks. And it's just so good to get the job done for everyone today. a well-behaved line racing rejoice jump with purpose on the inside roll up began well going forward soon after the start was major l plundering fourth away malane settling fifth down on the rail and then came ralphie and shamaton shamaton goes out to last that's the first call 900 left to run rejoice use barrier one to full advantage holds the lead and runs it at a good gallop leads major l by just over a length about three away third roll up he's in the box seat inside of plundering in a good fourth a length and halfway to ralphie outside of malane lying six on the rail and two to shamaton at the tail end they reach the half Halfway mark, 600 metres left to run. Can Rejoice lead all of the way? Major L second coming to the turn. In third was Roll Up. He's had a good run as Rejoice shifts away from the rail, so there's ample room for Roll Up to come through near the inside. Plundering being called upon. Malade searching for runs. Ralphie coming wider, and then came Shamaton. It's still Rejoiced in front. They haven't got him as yet. Plundering trying to knuckle down. Malade with a bit of work to do. Major L only one batting, and so too was Roll Up. It's Rejoice the leader, 100 left to run. Plundering on the outside. Malane slipping through near the rail. Malane along the inside, going home the best. First up victory for Malane. Beat Rejoice, Plundering and Major L. Then roll up Shamaton and Ralphie, last over the line. All right, let's have a chat with winning trainer Tony Gollan and I guess uh, a sense of relief in, in one aspect, Tony, to get this fellow back into the winner's stall here today, Malane. Yeah, definitely, Burn. Uh, the team at Rosemont, the Victorian Alliance team, were um, fortunate enough to let me geld him. He had a couple of runs in the spring and he just come back a real stallion. He just wasn't himself. Uh, everything's been perfect since then. I've had a great prep with him. His trials, jump outs have been brilliant. His work's been perfect. The only nervous moment I had is where he started to bugger around in the gates there, which, was, which he hasn't been doing at the jump outs and trials. So I suggest there's still more improvement to come. But it was smooth in the run. Ryan had to pick his path. But I knew once he was clear, he'd have a good finish. He's very fit and he's... He's better than this greater race this time of year. He'll improve off this and, and confidence will be a big thing for him. And will that be sort of a plan for him if he's able to build some confidence in these lower grade races? You might keep him going into perhaps the early bit of the carnival? Yeah, absolutely. He's a big, strong boy. He's a gorgeous horse, as you would have saw in the pre-parade. So I've got enough horse to work with. And the idea at this time of the year, and as what the spring was here in Brisbane, was to try and get his rating up, get him to earn a spot during the carnival. We know he's got carnival ability. It's just a matter of getting his confidence up, his ratings to improve, and, and there's a nice race in him during the winter. Good on your time. Thank you. All right, let's have a chat with Ryan now. Tell us about this guy today. Look, uh, it's amazing what the family jewels can do when they come out. Um, I know a few blokes have probably needed as well. Uh, yeah, you and I both. <laughs> uh, anyway, look, he... Um, Apart from beginning a bit awkward, he's a little bit fractious in the gates. Um, is that just freshness, do you think? He, he was like that bit he, um, at Sunny Coast. He did the same thing. I put it down to that. But um, it didn't really uh, hinder us because he's better. We, we, we knew the, w the way we wanted to ride him and we were able to execute that. And um, there's still plenty of improvement to come. So it's just good to see him attack the line and want to do it today. Yeah, I mean, he just looked like he was just warming up into the race. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, he, um, like I said... Um, there's good improvement still to come so 
and it's amazing what the family jewels. Well, <laughs> it does. Well done. Thank you. Running the metric mile, all set, racing. No better time came away ordinarily. Let's look for this fancy pair. Captain Finkel out wide, fast away, showing speed, Texas Fireball. And there's Jungle Prince, third on, settling down with the Inflector in fourth, then Meet Paiati. Jealous of the blue colours, landing midfield, then Sharp Dazzler, UK Squeeze. And after the slow jump, no better time as last of all. Orman guides Captain Finkel across to the rail. He takes it up and leads the way. But his main danger is right on his hammer intact. That's Jungle Prince. So the big guns, one, two as they go towards the 1,000 metres. Texas Fireball in third, meet Paiati fourth. Fifth in the run was the Inflector, and then Sharp Dazzler, Jealous No Better Time, and UK Squeezes last. On the side of the course, with just over halfway to go, Captain Finkel is going to try and lead all of the way, but Jungle Prince is in close attendance, trails by a length. Two to the great, Texas Fireball in third, he gets a good run on the lead pair. Meet Paiati one away in fourth, fifth the rail of the Inflector, then Sharp Dazzler, Jealous No Better Time, and UK UK squeeze, seven lengths span them, 500 left to run. There's been a little change to the order. Captain Finkel will turn into the straight in front. Let's see what gas is in the tank and let's see what Jungle Prince can do now. Texas Fireball goes back to the inside to give chase to that lead pair. Then Meet Paiati and Sharp Dazzler is running on strongly down the outside. Soon afterwards, Jungle Prince went up and hit the lead. Texas Fireball's a danger. And right down the outside, Sharp Dazzler and Meet Paiati. Captain Finkel's gone. Jungle Prince is gone as well. It's on the inside, Texas Fireball. Ball, now swallowed up by Sharp Dazzler. Sharp Dazzler appreciating the mile, raced away over the final part, and Sharp Dazzler beat Texas Fireball. Photo third, meet Paiati or Jungle Prince, pretty plain. Then came Jealous, UK Squeeze, no better time, followed by the Inflector and Captain Finkel. Well, he turned in a real shocker and ran last. All right, let's have a chat with winning trainer Maddie Sears now about Sharp Dazzler. Now, of course, she also had the hot pot in the race, the inexperienced hot pot, uh, that being Jungle Prince, who just did a whole lot wrong today. But how happy were you to see Sharp Dazzler sail down the middle of the track? Or Mikey? Yeah, it was really good to see it happen. Obviously, Melvin and Suat own both the horses, so to see the one wins, great. But... Yeah, go Sharp Dazzler. He just blew him out of the water. He had been so lucky in, in probably two or three maidens and then broke through last start, but really stepped it up to an open three-year-old today. Yeah, he really stepped it up today. Um, I'm no surprise that he did run top three. Um, I'm a bit surprised that he won like he did. Um, but I think the win the other day gave him a heap of confidence and it showed today. But, yeah, I think he's a bit underrated and he should have won his maiden probably five times over. We know that, uh, jun that uh, Jungle Prince is obviously a talent, but do you think people were a bit quick to jump in and, and for him to get to as short as $1.60 there, given he's so inexperienced? Yeah, I was pretty surprised with how short he was. Um, but, you know, I guess they're that price for a reason. He just did a bit too much wrong today. I sort of was a bit worried early on when he just started pulling really bad. So I'd say now we'll be taking the blinkers off and um, he'll benefit a lot from that. But, you know, it's great to see both horses race so well. Yeah. Will you just come back at hogging distance with him as well, do you think? Oh, we'll just see sort of what happens um, and how he comes through it. But I think probably the first thing we'll do is take the blinkers off. He just did it way too hard um, to no fault of his own. Probably, oh, uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to say, but, you know, it's no credit away from the winner, that's for sure. How did Mum handle New Zealand? She was great. We had the best time. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Well done. Thanks, Fern. All right, let's have a chat to winning jockey CJ Graham. That's a double for her here today. How cute is this horse? Oh, he's just a dream. Um, he's so beautiful to ride. He just does everything I ask of him. Um, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel with him today, and there was good speed. He was in a really good rhythm, and... I felt as though I could have even popped a little bit sooner, but I was just trying to wait as long as I could. But he was just travelling so well into the top of the straight and just let rip when I asked him to. He's racing full of confidence. 
Yeah, I actually think he said, kiss this. Yeah. <laughs> I think there was a bit of rivalry between the stable mates and the strappers, so my strapper's very happy. All set. Racing. And Castilian jumps smartly. The Culloden began well. Northern Decree third away. Schmoozer rolling forward. No pace on early. Simply refused not too far away. Then Petersham and Seneschal. Followed by the Tyler. Getting back was Red Top, Moon and Me. Lady Ladar and All's Fair settles down last. Well, nothing wanted to lead. So Jasper Franklin took matters into his own hands and took Schmoozer to the front. A thousand metres left to go. Schmoozer leads from Simply Refuse. And Castilian is going to box seat in third for Maloney. The Culloden fourth the outside. And the tempo only fair. Northern Decree fifth but posted three wide. Centre Shell Park sixth the rail. Seventh the outside was the Tyler. Three wide was Petersham. It may have cover on the back of Northern Decree. Moon and me sailing along in fourth last. Third last Lady Ladar and the tail end pair. All's fair and red top. Up to the turn. Six lengths first to last. And by and large Schmoozer's had a butte run out in front. Lead simply refused by a neck at the bend. Castilian waiting on a run. Then the Culloden coming up deep in Northern Decree. Centre Shell hunting along the rail. Then Moon and me trying to thread the needle. Further back was the Tyler. Peter Schumann, Lady Nadar, the widest runner. Schmoozer leads the way. Centre Shell, though, is coming home gamely along the inside and posing a real threat to Schmoozer, who's in for the fight. Centre Shell, the inside, now getting by Schmoozer. They're lining up for third and fourth. Peter Schum and Lady Nadar flying home, but Centre Shell lands good bets and wins. Beats home Schmoozer. Third, Lady Nadar. Then Peter Schum, the Cullinan, Castilian, followed by... At the head of the others, all's fair, simply refuse, red top the Tyler, Moon and me and Northern Decree, finished in last position. Yeah, he was great, wasn't he, today? I mean, some people like buying handbags. Stewie Kendrick likes buying horses online. How much did you pay for this one, Stewie? I think he was about, yeah, 70000 something like that. But he, um, look, he's an incredibly well-bred horse, you know, he's by Kingman and... Um, uh, yeah, if you can sort of hunt around in these sales, there's always some nice horses, especially when you're sort of bringing them out of that Sydney form back up to here. And um, he's absolutely thrived this horse since he's come up. So his first up run was excellent and very unlucky the other day, we thought. And um, Robbie just sort of said he came in and put his hands up the other day and said it was just a mess. And, um, yeah, he wrote, couldn't have ridden him any better today. So he's made up for that, that's for sure. So, yeah, it was good to get the result. At least you were forgiving. Well, yeah, and you've got to be, haven't you? So, you know, especially when you've got, um, you know, jockeys like Robbie on, I mean, and as I said, he came in and just said nothing worked out and, um, and he still battled on well. So today he had the perfect run, you know, slipped up there on the inside and, uh, yeah, got the result, which is good. And he looks like he's going to have plenty more wins in him here as well. I think so. He looks a nice horse for here, that's for sure. Very exciting. Good on you, Stuart. Thanks, Benny. All right, let's have a chat with Robbie Dolan now. and. Robbie, you got it right today. Not much went right for your last time you rode this horse, but today it was smickety boo. Yeah, butchered him last start. <laughs> he, said, I, 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 he didn't quite say that. He he may have implied it. Yeah, my manager's done a great job to get me back on him today because it wasn't <laughs> the best ride. And look, sometimes horses jump too well for their own good, and that's what happened to him last start. And look, I put my hands up. We were three wide to trip, and you can't win doing that sometimes. And good barrier today. Horse inside me missed a kick, and I got in the back of the favourite. And I just thought this is the one to beat. It'll bring me where I want to go. And in fairness, I'm quicken up through his gear as well. Um, and I think he'll get, he'll get further. Yeah. I mean, they've paid a 70 odd grand for him. He'd probably run one half that plus a little bit back today. But as far as winning more races, what, where do you think this horse fits in in Queensland? He's a horse who still lacks a little bit of confidence. I think once he gets a bit of confidence in himself up over a mile, he could contest some of them big races a couple, couple of months down the line.
Red light turned on. Racing Brisbane. Out wide, Binding won the start. Regal Pom began well. They were the first two on settling down. The well-backed Hollywood North third away and warp speed in fourth. Mitchell the Crown didn't begin with great gusto, but Matheson now sends him forward. He'll go up outside of Regal Pom and he'll trail the leader, Binding. In the second half of the field was Aussie Nugget, then Butch and Bugs to the inside, Harbell, then Too Much Class and Ostermeyer. The stayer is last of all. That's the first call, 1,100 left to Rana and Binding after a swift start went across to the rail to lead with Mitchell of the crowd now sitting up in second. Regal Pom in the box seat third. A length and a half away fourth Hollywood North. Rod's got him basically in a one out one back position and warp speed fifth over on the inside. So the top five in betting are one, two, three, four, five at the halfway mark. The second half of the field headed by Aussie Nugget. Then came Harbell. Well back was Butch and Bugs. Too much class and Ostermeyer. 700 left to run. Binding is trying for an all the way win. Betch of the crowd edging closer now. Trailing by a neck as they reach the 600 metres. Regal Pom third, Hollywood North primed and ready to go. Near the inside was Warp Speed. Aussie Nugget trying to make ground and then Harbell, Butch and Bugs, Ostermeyer to the outside and Too Much Class turned in last. Down below the 400 metres, Betch of the Crown went to Binding. Warp Speed gets the inside run. Here comes Hollywood North charming to the right time and then came Regal Pom. These five are stretched across the track in a good battle. On the outside Hollywood North, Binding trying to fight on, then Warp Speed and Ostermeyer right down the outside. Hollywood North North reach the lead. Have a look at Ostermeyer. Right down the outside. Up he goes and wins. Ostermeyer an upset. Beats either Hollywood North or Warp Speed. And fourth over the line, Binding. Then came Harbell. Betcher the crowd knocked up. Butch and Bugs. Aussie Nugget. Too much class. And Regal Pom dropped right out to finish last. It's a last to first win for Ostermeyer. Troy joins us for a chat now. Congratulations on the win. Tell us, what have you done with him over the last couple of months? Um, he just went out to a, to our honest place, Steve McCarthy, out at, um, out at Budgie and had a couple of weeks off and then back into work, a little trial. <coughs> Sorry. And, um, yeah, it sharpened him up nice for today. I mean, he just means so much to the family, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a gun. He's a $1,000 horse. He's put in nearly 300000 now. He's, like, it never happens, so he's a genuine little fella and... Yeah. A thousand dollars is all you pay for him. A thousand dollars online and cost more to get him up here actually but from Adelaide, but it's worked out good. Obviously he usually wins over further, but on the fresher side today he had the big finish, didn't he? Yeah, that trial the other day in Toowoomba it was pretty sharp and Sir Warwick and a couple of good horses in it, so to to beat them home it was a good trial. He'll be paying for the kids' schooling fees shortly. <laughs> yeah, sure he will. It'll be nice. Enjoy the win. It's burning, thanks. Oh, all right, there he is. Troy and Alyssa train this fellow, Sweeney, from Toowoomba. It's a great story. Purchased online for $1,000. And he's just about, uh, yeah, today he hits a 300,000 odd mark. So if he hasn't bought a house for them up there, he's, he's paid for a good part of it. And there's probably many more wins to come for him. That was win number seven from just 34 starts, and he's had eight seconds in there as well. You're down in the weights because sometimes in the distance races, uh, he was really sort of heading up towards top weight. In fact, when he was in the lower grades, he was carrying big weights, and he's such a little guy, but he's just light on his feet, he's athletic, he's got great determination, and that was a terrific ride by Jake Bayless. He would have felt like a, a mini rocket down the straight here today, so. He's just been a marvellous buy and he'd be very, very special. They're only a boutique stable, so he, they'd be with him 24-7 and he'd be a real family pet. So we'll get Jake's thoughts on the rocket and how he felt inside the final furlong. I was just saying he must have felt like a little rocket today. Jeez, he let rip, didn't he? Um, obviously the tempo was there to sort of settle up for a little horse like him, but, you know, he sort of does bare minimum early and... <laughs> A lot late, which is what you want, so he keeps the business in for the last crack. So, even after the winning post, she was flying, he couldn't stop him. So, he obviously gets further, and um, no, great, great training effort from Troy. You know, he's just tipping out, giving a little bit of freshen up first up at the mile, and yeah, spot on. Yeah, had all that residual fitness. He's certainly got his own style, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, as I said, just bare minimal early. You don't think you got a horse there, and he likes coming to the outside when he gets that daylight and a bit of room. He can let rip, little fella. Yeah. Well ridden. Good boy. Thanks.